in the Fat Quarter Shop studio, I've got Barb and Mary of Me and My Sister Designs, and they have this brand new double wide Dresden ruler, and of course, they've got a double wide Dresden pattern. So today, they're gonna show you how we're gonna make a block in this pattern. So Mary, tell me, tell me about your ruler. Okay, Kimberly, we have a new double wide Dresden ruler, and your traditional Dresden ruler is an 18 degree, and ours is 36, so hence the double wide. What we like about the double wide is it's fatter. You can see more of your fabric and things in there. Also, now that you have a double wide instead of the 20, you only need 10 wedges, and it's great. So the ruler comes with its instructions. It's all inclusive here. We tell you how big to cut your strip, what your finished wedge will be, well, how your how your finished how big your finished plate will be, how big to cut your background, how big your finished block is going to be. Yeah, so basically it's, everything it's you need here. is in that ruler. Yeah, but we have some fun different things we like to do with it. So first of all, I'm going to start with a strip of this size that works with our new double wide Dresden pattern, and I'm going to cut up each side. I'm going to now she's got line her, it up. She's got it with the fabric, so it's mm -hmm. double folded, wrong sides together. Yep, I'm going to line it up on the edge. And then I'm also down here at the fabric line and I'm going to cut up both sides. This is kind of weird, but we're okay. Whoops. And you're going to get 10 across? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So you've got your little wedges now. You've got your wedges. Okay. We're going to get rid so of we those. would just go ahead and continue cutting 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, what I do is I fold mine in half. So right sides together, fold it in half, and I like to crease it. You can either crease it with an iron, just a warm iron, or just finger press it. And then I'm going to do a quarter inch on the top and the bottom. Because now that it's big enough, wide enough, we can do both ends. If you have the little 18 degree, you're going to have these two stitches that are going to pull out. But it's, it's, it's nice and fat now. And so we're using our full color 2024 since that matches your me and my mm -hmm. sister design fabrics. And so we've just got two quarter inch strips. The other thing I was going to tell you all about that Barb and Mary did that's genius is they took the sheet that came with the ruler yes. and they laminated it so you won't lose it in all of your, um, all of your stuff. Yes. In your drawer. Some have actually said just put, punch a hole in it, put it on a ring with all your other instructions. Because it's kind of a fun thing to have. Yeah, that's a great idea. Because we use it a lot. Okay, so from here on, we've stitched up both ends. We're going to turn these finger pressed, your seams open, and we're going to pop those out. Now you can have asbestos fingers and press that with the iron, or I just pop them out, spread them open, and pop them out. And so you don't cut, you don't trim at that point at all? No, not at all. And I'm going to use my little purple thing, and I'm going to look how nice that came out. Okay, so wow. I have a question to ask. Yeah, yeah. How do you get it to not pop out through the end? through the end. I used to do it with my scissors and it would cut through. <laughs> but so this like, little thing works really well. You just keep pop. working on it. But I also pressed, finger pressed my seam open okay. as I was doing that. So on the inside it's nice. I didn't have to trim it. Just pop that out. And since we did that little line at the beginning, we folded it in half, you can line up your seams with that. On the, the crease right on here. On the crease and it makes it perfect. It makes it really nice. So we're going to go ahead and press that. Okay, and then we'll And we're going to make a couple more. Okay. Okay, now I have gone through my stash of me, my sister design fabrics, which there are a ton of them. You should see my, my bins. It's fun. So I made a whole bunch of little wedges. And so I've got two here. That the next thing to do is to put them together. And I always start with my small point for my center because that's where my eye pulls the most. So I'm going to line those up and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch down the side here. I'm going to back stitch also because in normal quilting we always cross our seams and we don't have to back stitch because it's tacked down. But I'm going to back stitch here, go across and back stitch again. So here I have two of our many fabrics sewn together with my back stitching and I press my seams open. It makes it lay nice and flat. And do you use steam? I use lots of steam. And when you're putting these two together, do you pin or do you wing it? I don't. I just okay. wing it. Okay. Later on, you probably will when things get different sizes and you're working with stripes and things. But right now, no, I don't. I just let it go. So I work with five at a time. There's ten in a wedge or a ten in a, a plate, but I do five at a time. So I've got one here with five. And I press from the outside in. My iron tends to catch the edges, so I go this way. And doing five at a time, it just makes it lay flatter. It just works really nice. So I've got five. 
and then here we are with a 10. What I did is I took my two fives together, I stitched on them, well, it it this way, and here again, and now I've got my 10. And I pressed it nice and flat, and I probably starched it also because I do that. Never starch in between, only starch at the very end. Now, when you're sewing your wedges together, are you starting at this inner point or the outer point? Or does it matter? The inner point. Okay, perfect. It's just my eye pulls here first. And if I'm a little off by any reason, it's going to be on the outside edge. Awesome. But they should be perfect from there. Awesome. So what That's are we going to do next? Okay, we're going to center this on our background square. And to center it, I've, got, I've cut it the size it says on the little instructions. And I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to fold it in half again. I'm going for centering. I'm going to keep going and I'm just going to press this a little bit. Just enough to give me a little bit of a crease in there. Okay, look what I get to work with now. I'm going to center this on. And you have so all those down, lines now. And across. You've got everything to help line you up here and there. So you're just Another, matching up your points. Yes, you're just going with your seams on one side, points on the other. And this looks so beautiful because when I first saw your ruler, I thought this was all applique, but it's oh, not. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. And so it's totally awesome. And you could put something really cool behind it. Like you could put a yellow behind it or a navy behind it, mm -hmm. and you would have, you know, a pop of, of color. Sure. Now, I pin these when I sew. Okay. And you use glass head I pens. use glass head because I sometimes press. <laughs> so I'm just going to pin these down. And then we'll go to the sewing machine, and you can sew us how to top stitch. Okay, here we go. I've attached my edge foot on my machine and I've tapped my needle over just a little bit here, just enough so I get pretty close to the edge but not right on the edge. And I'm gonna just start on one of the outside edges of this. I found that if I do the outside edge first, it lays flatter and easier on my middle. So try our new double wide Dresden ruler. It's fast, fun, and easy. There's no raw edges and you get the secondary star pattern in the center. So pick up the double wide Dresden pattern and ruler at Fat Quarter Shop See you next time.